Hey everyone, it is Saturday morning of June 30th around 10, 10 a.m. And today I'm hiking in Jefferson National Forest of Virginia. Yes, you heard that right. I'm actually hiking in Virginia. It's been a while because of all of my peak bagging excursions in North Carolina in order to finish the lookout towers and 6,000 foot peaks. But I actually live really close to the Virginia border and under three hours to a lot of great Virginia hikes. So I thought I'd mix it up and get back into Virginia this weekend to bag a couple wilderness high points and Apple Orchard Mountain, which is on multiple peak bagging lists such as county high points, prominence, and mountain range high points. Apple Orchard Mountain is the tallest peak on the Blue Ridge Escarpment or Blue Ridge Front of Virginia at 4,222 feet. The Blue Ridge Front is separate from the Allegheny Mountains along the Virginia and West Virginia border and the Iron Mountains in the southwest portion of the state. Um, I parked at Petite's Gap, which is just behind me off of the Blue Ridge Parkway, and I'm currently on the Appalachian Trail heading north into the James River Face Wilderness. This is a quick warm up hike out and back to Highcock Knob, which is the high point of the James River Face Wilderness. I think it's about one or 1.1 miles to the summit, but it is a steep 650 foot climb. I only am taking my phone and my camera to do this and I left everything else at the car. When I bag that peak and get back to the car, I'm gonna pick up my real bag and all my water and do the six mile hike out to Apple Orchard Mountain and also bag the Thunder Ridge Wilderness High Point, which is just on the slopes of that mountain. So today I'm gonna to get two Wilderness High Points and a prominent peak that will uh, get me towards a lot of Virginia and County High Point lists. The Wilderness High Point list, specifically the Southeastern Wilderness High Point list, is something I'm thinking about, but it is actually a really difficult list because it encompasses all of the states in the Southeast. And there are a lot of peaks in these wildernesses that are not on any trails and they're very isolated. Fortunately today, both of the wildernesses that I'm going through, the second one being the Thunder Ridge Wilderness, uh, those high points are right on the trail. So I'm gonna scooch on up to Highcock Knob and turn around. But uh, so far I can tell that this little portion of the James River Face Wilderness has some really good sized trees, second growth or even old growth hardwoods. So I think it's gonna be an enjoyable forest hike from here. Before I move any further from my intro video segment spot. Petite's Gap is down there and this is the first massive tree that I passed. There's actually some big trees right at the little parking area but this one's really impressive in terms of its size. Probably only four feet in diameter but it is thick and uh, there's some really nice ones up ahead too. So uh, let me get this started, try to knock this out quickly. My first time in the James River Face Wilderness today. This is the summit of Highcock Knob at 3,073 feet. And it is the highest elevation in the James River Face Wilderness. The GPS is actually, the GPS coordinates I found online are a little bit off. It says the true summit's like 150 feet further north. And uh, this is actually the high point, but it's very obvious. Cannot find a marker though. <sighs> Surrounded by waist high, mature looking, stinging nettle. Sure, I'm glad I'm not bushwhacking to get to this summit because that would be pretty miserable. So that took about 25 minutes or so. It's actually a pretty tough climb, even though I said it was 1.1 miles and 650 feet or so. It basically climbed close to 400 feet in the last third of a mile. So I'm glad I started with that with no pack weight because it will have been pretty miserable to end the day with. 
So now I'm gonna quickly get back down and begin the long portion of my hike. I'm back at Petite's Gap. So while I'm gearing up for the real hike, thought I'd go ahead and show you the map. I'm carrying the National Geographic Lexington Blue Ridge Mountains map, covering both George Washington and Jefferson National Forests, and also other areas. This kind of covers the region of the Blue Ridge Mountains between Roanoke and Charlottesville, Virginia. So, see this P? That is Petite's Gap, just off of the Blue Ridge Parkway. And I did the shore out and back up to Highcock Knob in the James River Face Wilderness, back at the Gap. Now I'm going to follow the Appalachian Trail southwest into the Thunder Ridge Wilderness, which is one of the smaller, smallest wilderness areas in Virginia. Either this or the Little Dry Run Wilderness, I believe, are the smallest, less than 4,000 acres. I think there's going to be one really good view from where it says Arnold Valley of the, uh, this will be the Thunder Hill or Thunder Ridge Overlook. And then I'll pass by the shelter and there's a little um, portion called the guillotine which passes under a rock above you. And then finally I will summit Apple Orchard Mountain and turn around. This section is roughly 5.6 miles long. I think it's six at the highest. Second new wilderness of the day. Heading south on the Appalachian Trail. When I was showing you the map at my car, I failed to uh, talk about the elevation and weather on the hike today. So I thought I'd go into details as I near the end of a continuous 1500 foot climb out of Petite's Gap towards the crest of Thunder Ridge. Although the elevations in Virginia do not compare to North Carolina, you can still find some difficult heights. This is just one for example, where the elevation change from Petite's Gap to Apple Orchard Mountain is a uh, just over 1,800 feet. And that doesn't take into account the elevation gain of the hike. And I thought I'd let the less familiar viewers know the difference between elevation change and elevation gain, since it's not always explained. Elevation change is just the difference between the lowest and highest elevations of a trail or a hike using subtraction, while well, elevation gain adds up all the individual ascents, which inevitably will be quite a bit more than the elevation change of any hike, unless you pick a trail that just goes straight up to a summit and you turn around and go straight down. So elevation gain is a much more accurate, accurate metric explaining the difficulty of a hike. And it actually irritates me a lot when I see in a lot of guidebooks and internet sites giving you just the elevation change of a hike because I don't think it's nearly as useful. Unless you're just talking about doing a trail one way, elevation gain is gonna let you know how hard that trail is. So it's definitely a drawback of a lot of the things I read. Anyways, the elevations of Virginia lead into my weather topic, which is, this is one of the main reasons I don't like hiking in Virginia in the summer, because the Blue Ridge Front and the Allegheny Mountains are not nearly high enough to bring you up to cooler temperatures. They're only four to 4,500 feet at the highest points. Only the Iron Mountains in Southwest Virginia are above 5,000 feet. So there's a heat warning across the Southeast all weekend. 
in this immediate area. It's supposed to be in the mid 90s today with a high relative humidity between 60 and 70 percent. So that's really hot. And at these elevations around 4,000 feet, it's still going to be in the mid 80s. If I was hiking in the Black Mountains or the Great Smokies, it would be around 70 degrees above 6,000 feet. So there's a huge difference in comfort and uh, you sweat a lot more at these lower elevations and the bugs are a lot worse. So if I do hike in Virginia, I definitely prefer the winters where the elevations are lower so it's not as cold and the views are better. So I think I'm getting close to the Thunder Hill or Thunder Ridge Overlook we should have a great view of Devil's Marble Yard coming up. This is the Thunder Ridge Overlook on the Appalachian Trail, just off the Blue Ridge Parkway. If you see a lot of blurry things in the video, that's because a ton of gnats and flying insects are in front of my camera. Let's check out the views. Got a wide open Western panorama of, I believe this is kind of the southern end of the Shenandoah Valley. And the Allegheny Mountains are the hazy flat ridge lines in the distance, part of the ridge and valley system along the Virginia, West Virginia border. What we do have is a really awesome view to the northwest of the James River Face Wilderness in particular. Devil's Marble Yard, which is that really massive open scar on the slope of that mountain that is a gigantic talus boulder field, which you do not see in the Southeast Appalachian Mountains often, especially North Carolina and Tennessee. You'll see it more often in Virginia, especially in the Shenandoah Mountains. That is a really cool talus field that I've never explored before and I would not want to do on a hot summer day like this. Maybe next winter. This is the Thunder Hill Shelter. It's a pretty rudimentary shelter. No bunks, not very large but it seems to be in good shape and water and a latrine are both located nearby. Has a picnic table, signs for water and privy. And there's also a lot of excellent flat campsites uphill in large grassy meadows. So this is a really nice spot to camp. This is a well-known Appalachian Trail landmark on the north side of Apple Orchard Mountain called the Guillotine. Pretty cool spot, but you know, a guillotine severs the head. This would just crush you. It's definitely much more like Indiana Jones, Rares of the Lost Ark first scene in the cave. Maybe it should be the Indiana Jones boulder. Not a catchy name though. Look at this uh, weird cluster of black flies or horse flies on something. It's a lot of them.
this enormous boulder field at the summit of Apple Orchard Mountain leads to the highest point on top of this huge boulder on the other side of the tree limb. Apple Orchard Mountain is 4,225 feet, making it the highest point in the Virginia Blue Ridge Escarpment. And this is actually the highest point the Appalachian Trail crosses northbound until you either reach Killington in Vermont or the uh, southern peaks in New Hampshire. So all of those AT through hikers after this, they won't reach these lofty heights for another thousand miles or so. Anyways, I stopped here because I have a nice view south of the Peaks of Otter Recreation Area. This peak right here actually could be Terrapin Mountain or it could be this peak. I did that about two years ago. Um, that was a good hike. But this uh, pointy peak further south is Flat Top Mountain, which is one of the three main peaks of Peaks of Otter. On the right is the much lower Harkening Hill. Most people don't really think of that when they think of the Peaks of Otter. And on the other side of Flat Top, which you can't see, is Sharp Top Mountain, which is much pointier. And then everything else is pretty hazy in the distance. I'm gonna go ahead and climb to the top boulder and then show you the rest of the summit. The true summit is uh, in those boulders through the trees there. Most of the top of this peak is a cleared meadow that uh, has decent views. I actually think the views from those boulders are the best, but I can see that in the winter this could be a really great view to the west when you have really clear visibility, but today it's so hazy that uh, you can't really make out much of the ridges to the west across the Shenandoah Valley. But the main feature at the summit is this crazy looking installation called an FAA Ray Dome, which is either also known as a weather station or a radar uh, installation. Ray Dome is the shorthand version that you'll see. I've actually hiked to one of these before and I've been trying to remember what mountain it was. I believe it was in North Carolina, but I really cannot remember. But it's a cool looking thing and you can actually see this from almost any viewpoint in this region and on the highway driving up uh, from Lynchburg and stuff. This uh, thing is glistening white in the distance, hovering 2,800 feet above the surrounding valleys. I don't know if you can tell, but there, this has got to be like a hundred freaking gnats just hovering around me. Uh, it's pretty awful here and at Thunder Ridge Overlook, there's so many that uh, I don't even want to stop for a break. I'm just going to keep moving. First, I'm going to go find the Thunder Ridge Wilderness High Point, which is somewhere along the field trees uh, boundary down there. But I'm ready to get going. I'm only a couple hundred feet from Pettit's Gap. Earlier I was saying Petite's Gap, and I'm not sure which is the correct pronunciation, so I'm gonna say both. You can correct me if you want, but both are in the video. And uh, if you stick around, I'm gonna include a short segment, maybe not short, but uh, of the gear I took on this hike, kind of an overview of what I would take on a really hot summer day hike. And uh, it amounts to not too much, because I don't wanna to carry too much weight, but uh, the last two minutes will be just looking over what I brought. Anyways, it's uh, around 4.35 and uh, I started just after 10 o'clock and had about a 30 minute break after my warm up hike and my main hike. So I've been hiking around six hours total and the GPS is saying 14.6 miles, which is about a half mile longer than I thought I would do. But I still had a good pace averaging over two and a half miles an hour total. 
I think the elevation gain is going to be around 3,000 feet. wasn't too difficult, but this descent from Thunder Ridge down to Pettit's Gap, which is about a mile and a half, maybe two miles, and 1,500 feet of elevation change, a lot steeper than I remembered, but I went up it fresh in the morning. Uh, very enjoyable hike, new section of the Appalachian Trail for me, and uh, got to bag a couple wilderness high points and a very prominent mountain in Apple Orchard Mountain. Uh, there aren't many views on this hike, really only two views from Thunder Ridge Overlook and Apple Orchard Mountain, and neither are like, you know, showstoppers. Uh, they would definitely be better in the winter, but uh, very, very fun forest hike, and the AT in this section is in very good condition, so have no foot problems, no aches, and uh, I'm finishing with ample time to get back home by dinner. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, stick around for my gear tutorial or overview.